So um, the cost of living crisis um, has always been a cost of leaving crisis. You know, the cost of leaving has always been about the cost of living for women. Um, and uh, I think it's really important for us to stop putting this in a, oh, this is one of the many terrible complex problems we have to deal with and understand that actually um, the cost of leaving um, is uh, directly and totally reflects uh, both both violence against women and girls in Scotland, but also um, a failure to, to tackle women's and children's poverty in a serious way. Um, and, uh, and women and children's poverty is a critical enabling condition for domestic abuse, for perpetration of domestic abuse, and essentially it's a tool handed to abusers by a our failure to gender our economic policy um, and interventions over the last decade. Um, the cost of living crisis uh, is, is, you know, essentially the cost of leaving for women and children can be um, living. And, uh, and yet we act as if um, women and children's poverty is, um, is an artifact of, uh, you know, women leaving, leaving to have children or, you know, leaving the labor market or that we just need to give women more confidence so they'll go, they'll go for higher paid jobs. Um, you can hear the rage. Uh, so I think it's really, um, that none of this will be a surprise to any of you that, that, uh, that the women's aid research, and I'm not going to read through it because I think Kat covered it pretty well, um, uh, has an, you know, women's poverty has an absolutely direct impact on their ability to uh, find safety and to leave an abuser. Um, and the cost of living crisis is just like handing abusers um, uh, bigger and better weapons. Um, Women, uh, and these, these are, um, uh, this is data from the Office of National Statistics and the Scottish Government stat Statistics. Totally stole this from Joe's slides. Um, uh, but it's really important to, to know what, to unpick and say, well, what does that poverty look like if you're a woman or a child living, in, um, uh, living with an abusive man? Um, and uh, in the context of social housing, um, in the context of single mother households, which is the, you know, the, the code we use is single parent, but really 90 plus percentage of them are headed by women who have less access to income. Um, and uh, and you can see the, the data in here about, and I don't take the prevalence data very seriously, it's pretty dodgy, but in, in terms of making the case that, that women who are poorer um, uh, that that abusers find it easier to control and abuse them. Um, uh, I think that case is quite clear. So here's here's where my rage comes in really far. So um, what's already been agreed? So uh, you know, I unite. Well, I think we are pretty united in Scotland. I mean, we have such such support in the Parliament around violence against women. Well, mostly. Um, and uh, and girls, and we have um, a really um, enabling, uh, you know, set of officials who slowly are beginning to understand why gender is important and um, move in the direction of implementing um, some some of the recommendations of the National Advisory Council. And yet, and yet the critical things that we have worked together in the past to decide might make a difference um, for women and children experiencing violence against women and poverty and women's inequality um, have been agreed, but but not delivered. So uh, as Kat referenced, um, individual payments of universal cre credit, that commitment was from 2017. We have, and I understand the complications of dealing with the DWP, and I'm really, really glad I didn't have that job, but um, absolutely not really clear on why we can't move faster on this now, as Kat pointed out. Um, creating a fund to support women experiencing domestic abuse to be able to leave their abusive partner, that commitment came out of the um, uh, working group on improving housing and homeless outcomes for women and children living with domestic abuse. That commitment was from 
2020. And can I remind everybody, it's almost 2023. Um, uh, implementation of the Domestic Abuse Protection Act. I understand that it's complicated with the protection orders. I know the police are very worried about money and um, uh, other issues, but we certainly, we certainly could have seen movement on um, uh, addressing the tenancy uh, arrangements, which do not include implementation of um, domestic abuse protection notices or orders, um, and would have an unbelievably important impact on um, uh, many households so that women and children could remain safe in their homes. Um, developing uh, and implementing a, a human rights-based accommodation pathway for victim survivors of domestic abuse with no recourse and for EEA nationals. That was a commitment in 2020. I understand that Westminster's appetite for taking, a, taking us to the Supreme Court taking us like I'm going to the Supreme Court. But, um, you know, the reality is this is a very bright set of officials and 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 uh, parliamentarians and ministers. I know you can figure this out. Um, we figured out the bedroom tax. This, this has to be a higher priority um, and ensure that uh, that women and children who experience domestic abuse are able to access free, free, domestic abuse, competent legal advice and representation. We've been trying to work out, I think it has now been nine months, but it might be slightly more than that, um, uh, the arrangements for uh, extending a, a, a model that would test both the recommendations from um, the independent uh, review of legal aid uh, and women's aids um, uh, conviction that uh, specialist uh, family lawyers uh, would be housed in, in uh, support agencies would be the, the model to go with. Um, nine months, we've been trying to sort out the arrangements for that. Um, and the commitment to providing this across Scotland came from 2020. So now, now you get to share my rage, I hope. Um, uh, and I will just say, and, uh, and I I hope today is the day that you all um, uh, could participate in this. Uh, our survivor reference group uh, has, in our work to develop and design a campaign and deliver a campaign that would help bring home that the cost of um, leaving is sometimes the cost of living. Our survivor reference group uh, has is hosting a, a vigil online uh, tonight um uh, at 7 p.m we're asking people to join us by lighting a candle take a photo of that candle or of yourself holding that candle upload it to social media using the hashtag for them all um and uh let let us take some time uh to remember emily uh, and to remember all the children and women who have died because we have failed to eradicate domestic abuse